Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Let's Play Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. I'm your host today, Silent Senior Zero Nine. Last time I left off, we did a Buku ton of side quest stuff. We picked up like two heart pieces, the K of Somaria, oh, I'm sorry, K to Birna, and the Magic K. We also got a level 3 sword, which is pretty awesome, man. We're probably going to need that because this next dungeon is pretty dang dangerous. Like, a lot of stuff in here can do about easily two to three hearts worth of damage. And we're going to be using lots of magic, too. So uh, make sure you have blue medicine uh, and the fire rod equipped. And here we go. All right. Level five, Ice Palace. Let's give this guy a read here. Elik, the magic flames will protect you inside this icy dungeon. Oh, cool. Also, if you come over here... Oh, okay, that's a little disturbing. Look like an evil little child. Those are called Freezors. There's a few of those you're going to run into in this place. And unfortunately, the only way to destroy them is with the Fire Rod. My choice of weapon usually for this place is the Hookshot and the Fire Rod, honestly. Hookshot just because you can reach across, get rid of enemies that would otherwise be a pain. Because you may notice, there's a lot of ice here. And when it comes to platforming and moving around, ice is usually a little more of a pain in the butt to traverse around him because you're constantly slip sliding all over the place. Like, you can't just push right a little bit. You have to kind of push, hold right, and run almost. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and make our way. Basically, we're, the way this dungeon works is we're going to be continuously climbing down, like going below floor one, below floor two. I think all the way almost to below floor seven. Okay, yeah. These are called Pengators. They're pretty nasty, actually, as far as how they look, and they're also very dangerous as far as how much damage they do. Like, I think they do about, like, two hearts worth of damage. And as you see, even with a level three sword, took two swings. Whereas if you took the hook shot to them, like I just did, it knocked them out. And here's the compass. The comp ass, as some people like to joke. Including me, because I'm an unoriginal turd. All right, so we're gonna push this block this way. We're gonna go ahead, go ahead, and <laughs> go to the right. I'm pretty sure there's nothing to do as far as... Yeah, we're just gonna get rid of those guys, and... Thankfully, you'll notice there's a lot of, like... Usually, you'll find enemies in areas where they drop this giant, like, bottle here. Which completely fills your magic meter, which is really handy, because you're gonna need that comfort of knowing you don't have to stress about running out of magic. Oh, lovely. Great. You're just gonna bunny rabbit me. Oh, oh, why do you have to bunny rabbit me? Oh, you want me to be your little playboy buddy? Oh. Anyways, top. Jeez. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I just want to at least double check just to show. Yeah, we can't go any... Uh, I can't go this way because of these blocks and the skulls. That chest is actually really freaking important because... Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It's kind of the big key. Yeah. I used my own toy voice with that one, but yes, that's the big key. We're going to need that. And getting to that is going to take a little bit. We're going to have to continue climbing down and then go around and then back up to get to it. But for now, let's just press onward. So, oh, lovely. Got some berries, the red ones that split off into two more berries. Ouch. And they electrocute the heck out of you if you're not careful. There we go. I'm going to try not to swear as much in this episode if I can. Oh, but that's... Yeah, shenanigans like that are going to make it really hard not to. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something about myself, okay? If you tick me off enough, I'm going to start letting the language fly. That ain't too pretty. So don't make me mad. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and just... I mean, you can throw this over there. It's not going to be a big to-do. You are going to want to go ahead and... There's multiple ways to do this, but easy way, easiest way I find is just use a bomb. And that'll blast it open. And then we can just fall down this hole. This will take us to B3. Or B2, I'm sorry, not B3. You start off at floor 1, then we go to B1, B2. Anyway. You cannot destroy the Skeleton Knight with a sword alone. When he collapses, he is vulnerable to another weapon. So actually, did not know this for the longest time how to get rid of him, until I started noticing when I lifted the skulls up. Well, that, not that. Dude. Well, I guess I eventually I just played around and eventually discovered bombs were the weapon of choice to get rid of them. They're kind of like the Stalfos from yeah. Wind Waker, honestly, where you use bombs to destroy them, you know, to break their body up, and then you can cut their head up and whatnot. Also, this room is very dangerous, be careful, because it is super easy to die. It's one of those annoying conveyor belt, well, one of those random conveyor belt rooms where the floor just kind of moves on its own. 
and you got spikes everywhere, so you're gonna get turned into coleslaw by the time you reach the end of it. So it's like, ugh, jeez. Also, you got these little shadow-looking creature things. How lovely. They kind of look... I mean, I'd say they look like Heartless from Kingdom Hearts, but honestly, they're a lot less cute. Truth be told, they're kind of like, eh. They're too menacing for my liking. I didn't mean to hit that, but that's okay. Yeah, you want to destroy one of the berries because they, re they give you a key. I think I want it to be red. I'm not sure, though. Either way, we're going to go down here, and it'll... I'll find out really quickly which one we need. It's red, okay. Thankfully, you'll know really quickly to do that. Also, you're going to want to, like, get up here, because at least you'll be out of the range of that fire bar. Dude! Don't fall. Seriously? Falling is not part of the plan of rescuing the maidens. Hello? McFly? Uh, uh. Going to want to hang out over here. And then we're going to make our way through here. How lovely. Also, if you go this way, those little blobby fun creatures, there's green slimes. They're like giant, like, glumps of boogers, honestly. Yeah, those will pop up, and then this will lead us to B3. Jesus, I feel like I'm playing Battleship every time I climb down these floors. Alright, then we gotta destroy these guys. Again, use the hookshot, get rid of them, boom, done. Pan gators are out of my hair. Whereas if you used your sword, or if you were clumsy trying to run around the ice, yeah, not a fun time. Alright, so we got kind of a fork in the road, honestly. There's a couple ways to go about this. I'm gonna choose to go up, just because I want to get down faster. No, not dancing, mind you. Jeez. Gee, y'all gotta be such smart butts. Anyway, this floor is gonna give out. The room get, gets locked in, and you basically have no choice but to just fall. So, eh, might as well just go ahead and fall. And then that way you can land right in here, and you'll find yet another one of these little Hylian statue things that basically help us by telling us what to do. Hey, look. Do not use your all your magic power if you do not possess the medicine of magic. Now, get ready to go into the depths of this dungeon. In other words, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, magic is required to fight the boss. Oh, yay, oh, yay. Alright, so, I remember I want to head down this way. It's kind of a pain because you got these fire bars, the bumper, you got a pain gator ready to just come out after you. But more importantly, we have, yes, another locked door, which we will get to eventually. And we have a switch we press, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to go ahead and go to the left. And you'll see there's a hole here. We're going to go ahead and just fall down, because like I said, we need to keep going down as far as we can go. And this room, hmm, if only we had the big key and a way to get to that. Yeah, past me did not know how to get to that, so I ended up actually at one point skipping that entirely. Until I happened to... Somebody had asked me, like, hey, why don't you have this? I'm like, uh, what is that? And I didn't know I can get it. <laughs> and then I looked it up, and I was like, huh. Well, dang, if I had thought to do that from the beginning, I would have gotten a much more helpful item that makes it so I don't die as much. Like, seriously. Anyway, lifting these little skeleton guys here will get you a key, which we do require to uh, proceed onward. Actually, maybe not so much in this room, but... It is nice to have a key, just in case. Uh, well, actually, you will need all the keys you, you can acquire in this dungeon. Get down that room. Jesus. Alright, and this room's kind of a pain in the butt, really. So what I like to do is I like to come up here all the way to the top. Ignore the screaming children in the background, by the way. We're going to hook shut our way down. Left and down. Left. And there we go. That's really the hardest part, is getting past that with the slip slidey mechanics there. And then we're going to go this way. I could have sworn that came to life, but you know what? That's fine. It's all good. Let's see. I think this is a switch. Yes. And that's yet another key. Yes. You need every single key you can get in this dungeon. Do not... I repeat, do not forget to pick up any of them if you can help it. Of course, that entails you actually knowing where all the keys are. So, you know. There's that. Also, this guy up here is going to come to life, so we're just going to melt his face off. Or suppose, or rather, melt his entire body up. I think there's one more of these doofuses here. Yeah. Here we go. Cut and print. Hooray. Alright, so now, if you may notice... Hmm, this looks familiar. Well, yes, it does, because we were just here. Alright. So now that we have a key... I'm going to go ahead and just push this switch here, because I think I need to, in order to progress. Actually, maybe that was a locked door. I don't know. Either way, I'm just my main... Get out of here. 
My main focus is to get up to the top right now, now that we've kind of dove into the deep basement. And we're actually gonna get rid of these, well, get rid of a few of these guys and just kind of make our way through because, honestly, killing all of them doesn't give you any goodies or rupees or anything, just gives you sadness. Also, be careful with the spike traps here. And don't bother going down there, there's nothing at all of interest, there's not a hidden room of rupees or any of that crap. To my knowledge, anyway. Maybe I'm being a dummy, but... <laughs> Hopefully I'm right. Hopefully I wasn't wrong into thinking there wasn't anything there. Also, you need to die. You also need to die. Why am I having a hard time hitting you? Oh, because this guy's hanging around in the wall like a jerk-off. Oh, hey. Jeez. Anyway, lift this up, hit the switch. Climb across here, open this up. Yet another key! How about that? And if we go through here... Ah, okay, this is starting to look familiar. So we're back in this room with the spike trap that goes back and forth. And if we head left, there's a way it'll lead us downstairs to another section of the map. We'll worry about that in a second. Right now I'm kind of interested in actually heading right. Because I want to actually hook shot back across the room here. Of course, I'm watching me regret this and actually need to get something of interest in that way. But I feel like I'm okay. Oh, lovely. Yeah, another skeleton knight. Or Stalfos knight, excuse me. I think I got messed up because Sarasala, Sarasala called them ske Skeletonites, but they're actually called Stalfos Knight. Unless Zeldapedia is wrong, which, you know, not impossible, it's a user run, but I feel pretty confident they know what they're talking about. Also gonna grab that key, and then we're gonna go ahead and continue this way. I'm pretty sure there's a map or something in here. Well, there's also trouble, clearly, which I find every day. Good job, me. Alright, yep, okay. And then I think we have to pull this tongue out, actually. Yeah, that'll lead that out that to the right, which we want. There we go, there's the dungeon map. Okay, so now we have the compass, the dungeon map, but we still don't have the big key. Also, if you wanted to go back through the door, you do have the option to do so, but for now, we're gonna continue back upstairs to be one, and hey, look at there, look at that. All right. We found it, and it's the big key. Gee. I only spoiled it a few moments ago. Good job, me. Alright, so we're going to want to go ahead and... I guess I'll just head left. I probably would have been faster just to go back out the way I came, but that's okay. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not looking to be really super duper efficient. Just trying to make my way through here in the best way that feels most natural to me. So for some of you, it's probably cringe because you're like... Silas Senior, there's a faster way! Ugh, why do I she torture us? Because I'm a meanie. I'm a big fat buoy who doesn't know how to be efficient. Also, I've cut this thing, I don't know how many times, and it's because a stupid jellyfish likes to hang out in the most awkward spot. Ugh. Alright, so... Let's bomb you. Just don't get impatient, dude. That's your problem. You're trying to bust through this as... Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a lot of jolts of electricity. Not a fun time, no thanks. Ugh. I'm surprised Link hasn't gotten any chills here. From how, like, freezing cold this place probably is. I mean, I would imagine the deeper we go, the colder it gets, you know, because you think about it. You know, it's like a refrigerator. The deeper far in the back you go, the colder the air is, probably, because you're getting closer to the air vent. But maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. I just know I don't miss working at Subway like I used to years ago. That was a long year for me. <laughs> I got some extra money out of it, you know, there was... That, that was the only plus from it. You know, I was working about 55, 60 hours every week, just about. You know, because I worked part-time at U-Haul and part-time at Subway. And then, of course, for anybody curious now, what do I do now? I mean, for now, I work as lead shifter or assistant manager for U-Haul. Basically, I'm back in the call center office that I used to be in, except this time I'm the team lead. And, uh... It's a, it's, it's a thing. It happened. You know, I do my job the best I can. There's more crap that gets piled on us every day. Mostly just kind of get there, get as much done as I can, and then get out. You know, I used to, like, stress myself out a lot more because I'm like, oh, no, I can't. I'm, I'm not going to be successful leading the team and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, now nah, I'm just like, eh, I'm not really worried. Just got to do what I can and then make sure. Seriously? I thought I was out of your range. What the hell? Ugh. But yeah, no, it's it's a pretty easy job. Yeah, if anybody's ever wondering, like, I don't know if I should pursue going into, like, a leadership role or assistant manager role. Do it. Seriously. Dudes and dudettes, do it. What the heck? Oh, you know what I think it is? 
is because I'm fate turning my back. Yeah, that's probably what it is. I'm being stupid. My bad. Well, maybe you can make it all the way across if I just, like, do this. It's awful, awful tight, though. Okay, yeah, you can. Oops. Well, whatever. Anyway. Yeah, no, if you, any of you are out there, like, wondering, should I pursue trying to be in leadership team role? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Just be aware most of those roles, if you're, like, you got a lifestyle or, like, a schedule that says, hey, I really can't be working extra hours, you're kind of expected to work full-time when you do that, so that's the trade-off. But your pay usually gets bumped up, and you do actually get more hours. So if you were needing more money or trying to meet a certain goal that requires more money, consider pushing yourself to that point, especially if you're in, like, a... You know, you're still in college, or, or maybe not in college, maybe you're like in between jobs or whatever and trying to find some money. Find a way to make some money. That'd be the way to do it, honestly. Just push your, you know, if you're working at a place, at a grunt level position or whatever. I mean, I hate to say grunt level, because it's not. You know, everybody's position matters. But, you know, when you're only working part-time hours, it can be kind of dis or disorienting. It can be kind of a drag. Just, you get the same paycheck every week and you don't feel like you're making enough. Well, the only way you can fix that is if you just push up, higher up, try to pursue any roles that require a little more responsibility or more, like, certifications. Cause, I mean, I got... That's what I did, too. At one point, I just, like, decided, hey, what the hey? Might as well go ahead and get myself certified to use a forklift, pump propane, all that crap. And now that I know how to do that, it's like... Now, I don't do that anymore, but I know how to do it, at least, you know, so... Anyway... For bombing that floor out and getting in here. Woo! You got the blue mail. This armor reduces the damage you take from enemies. Awesome. Yes. This is so freaking... So much of a relief. Oh my gosh. I couldn't find the right words, but I was just kind of like... It's good. It's a good feeling. Like, basically it's like having your... You know how like in the Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, they added like a... Um... Actually, what am I doing here? I need to check my map. Let's see... Is there anything else I need to do? Nope. Okay. Just gonna use the big key and go through the door then. It's kind of like... Yeah, adding that white layer of defense around your hearts. Really? You're just gonna drop down on me all cheerily? Alright. That's cool. I'll just use a bomb and let you blast your enemies away. Seriously. Dude. Dude! Ugh. Anyway. Dude! Ugh. God, you guys are paying. But anyway, yeah. Just some food for thought in case anybody's ever wondering, like, can I do this? The answer is yes. Yes, you can. Don't ever let yourself question yourself out of it. I used to think I'm not good enough to lead a team or anything, but, like, there's really nothing much to it. I mean, you're basically the right-hand wing person, whoever the manager on duty is. And if you're wondering, hey, can I become a manager? The answer is yes. Whether you want to or not, that's totally up to you. Myself? Eh, I do, but not with you all. <laughs> I'll be honest, the stress level's way too high, and the pay is just not as good, so I'm like, nah, it's okay. I'll find something better. I mean, I say that, but, you know, here I am still working in the same position, but I know it's because I haven't really pushed myself to look around. Also, I'm gonna get rid of all these enemies, because this is just annoying. Is there another one up here that's supposed to come down? Or Stalfos Knight? Yeah, there you go. I was like, I knew there was one more of you pain in my butts. Pain in my butts. My butts. You're turning into a hemorrhoid. Urgh. Alright, so what we want to do is we do want to go down to where that door is, and we want to do that by pushing the switch, but the problem is, and this is where this palace, this level 5 dungeon, became the hardest thing for me as a kid. I got stuck here, and I could not figure out how to get the stupid thing to cooperate. And so eventually I left, and then I went to, like, Dungeon 6, and then I got an item there that lets you, like, come back here and you can do this. Or, alternatively, you can do what this dungeon's intention is, which is... You want to come over here and hit the switch to where the blue is hit. And... Well, I'm coming here just so I can recharge, but... You're going to hit the blue switch so that way that's opened up. And you got to go back upstairs. Also, these jars here, if you... I think from the top, now that we've hit the switch where it's blue, you can actually head left or right, and it leads into a room full of fairies, which would be nice if I need to, but right now I don't need to. You're going to come down here and you'll notice these blue columns are down, so what you're going to do is you're going to push this block down, or this block down, and you might be thinking, okay, cool, yeah, I'll have, I'll be able to push that switch, or put the, push the lock on top of the switch. Nope. 
you actually need to go on the other side and push one of those blocks off so that way it actually lines up perfectly with the switch. Yeah, this temple is plain evil. So now we gotta go back through this mess, this hellhole of a dungeon. As if we didn't go up and down to flares enough, playing around here, we now have to go back up again just to come back down and we wind up on that side of the map, basically. It's kind of a pain, but it's also, I guess in some ways, it's kind of a geni ingenious, you know? But anyway, I digress. We're going to go ahead and uh, make our way up this way. Of course, anybody who's a speedrunner definitely loathes this place with a passion because it's such a pain in the butt to get through because you have to do this whole wraparound bit just to get to where it is you need to get to. And it's so much effort just for like some small amount of gain, you know? It's like you do all this extra work thinking you're going to get the best tip in the world and you get like a, a little penny for thoughts. And it's like, well, screw you too then, man. Anyway, climb back up to B4. And I guess I should probably get the fire rod out again because that guy's going to come back to life. Jeez, how many of you do I have to kill? How many of you do I have to melt your face off just so you leave me the heck alone? Crying out loud, man. Y'all are annoying, dude. Oh, excuse me. Had some cheeseburger back earlier today. It was really good. Sorry for burping you guys' ear. I'm sure that's really freaking attractive. Especially with the microphone, like, right up to my mouth. It's like... Blah, 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 blah. You can hear the gurgling grossness factor in my freaking maw. My maw, man. Right in my maw. Right in my jawline. Anyway, you're going to make like you're going to the big key room again. Or the um, big chest room. And... No, not the booby room. Get your minds out of the gutter. Uh, whoa, hello. <laughs> Ow, look at that. Jeez, even with the blue mail, he took that many hearts from me. That's crazy. Anyway, you're going to push this block over here. Fall down, because it's, it's just a lot faster doing it that way. Unfortunately, everything does respawn in here, so you got to kill all the monsters again. Oh, yay, oh, yay. Once again. Once more feeling, and yes, I would use the medallions, but... I've actually tried them in the past. They're kind of useless to most of the enemies in here, so there's no point in doing so. Because if you think about it, most of the, like, talisman, uh, whatchamacallit, things that you use, whenever you're, like, slamming them into the ground, it only affects enemies on the ground, and most of the enemies in here are either, like, invulnerable to quick damage like that, or they're floating, you know? It's like, well, dang. Screw that, everybody just has the ability to levitate. Anyway, enough rambling, let's go down. And this is the last and final room you actually find before you actually go to fight the boss, which is kind of nice. Nice little climactic point here. <clears throat> Excuse me, and if the temple hasn't worn you out enough and kicked your booty enough, you know, the boss itself can be kind of a pain in the butt too. Oops, well, I was not, ex I was expecting it, but I was not expecting them to violently just jump on me. Jeez, you bunch of nasty jellyfish. Alright, get some restock there. I don't think... Can I pull this down? Yeah, I can. Okay. I don't think... Does this do anything if I pull it? Nope. Okay. Alright, so you're gonna go over here and then these statues... If you remember back in, like, Dungeon 3, or I guess... Yeah, Dungeon 3, only one of these can be pushed or pulled. Come on. Really? You're gonna make me pull it out more? Fine. Here, get it up here and get it out of the way. Seriously. And then we're going to hammer this down, hammer this down, lift this up, and that is where the boss is. So, you're going to want to make sure you have the fire rod equipped, and good luck, because this thing, this, I know, this boss fight likes to drain your magic meter a lot. B7, Cold Stare! Alright, so the main thing with him right now is we're just avoiding getting hit by the raining snow pellets that fall from the ceiling, which isn't really hard to dodge. You're just basically throwing blobs of fire at the, uh... Well, I was gonna say at the giant block of ice, but really, that kind of got destroyed. And then you've got three... It splits off into three versions of itself, which isn't too bad. That was cool. Although you don't want to, like, let it hit you like I... Like I'm being a dumb dumb doing. Now, you can't actually just slice these guys with your sword, which, you know, probably would be advisable if you don't have magic, but... Screw that. I've got three bottles of Medicine of Magic, and I've got a buku ton of rupees to restock, so we're just going to continue using the Fire Rod and just destroying the heck out of this monster. And just like that, massive explosions, heart containers, and right in the center, as per usual.
We rescued another maiden! Woo! That was a little off key there, that's okay. Because of you, I can escape from the clutches of the evil monsters. Thank you! They say the Hylia people control mysterious powers, as did the seven wise men. But the blood of the Hylia has become thin over time. We who carry the blood of the seven wise men do not possess strong enough power anymore, either. Our powers will increase if we mix the courage of the knights with the wisdom of the wise men. Only a short time remains until the gate of the castle, linking the worlds, opens completely. If you defeat Ginnon, this world will vanish, and the Triforce will wait for a new holder. I believe in you. Good luck! Do you understand? Yes. May the way of the hero lead you to the Triforce. Yeah! Cool. Alright. Awesome sauce. Like sauce! Got chocolate sauce! You yeah, you! Yeah. Well, that was Dungeon 5, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That was fun. It's been real, but uh, I reckon that's going to be the end of this video. And uh, next time we meet, we're going to go ahead and make our way over to the 6th dungeon. And uh, we're going to kick some butt, take some names with that. Uh, this guy's really starting to take me off. We've got to do something about him. Arrows, maybe? Hello? Nope? Okay. Oh, now there's two of you. There's two of you! What? You mean to tell me that doesn't work? I guess I have to spin attack him. Ooh. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Just spin attack and get rid of it. Anyway, I love y'all a bunch of Soul So Slap, and I will see you next time when we go over to Misery Mire, which is an interesting place to get to. It requires a little bit more creativity, and it's an area... Uh, we have to use an area entering from the light world to the dark world that we have not used yet, so... Uh, also, you're going to need the flute if you don't already have it. Um, if you need to know how to get that, refer to the video card on screen. It's um, basically the video where we backtracked a Buku Tone after completing dungeon number two in the Dark World. That'll definitely help you out as far as trying to find that. But besides that, I will see y'all next time. On Let's Play A Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, I'm an old man. Take care of y'all. Peace out. Bye-bye. <laughs>